Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of e-commerce mastery. I'm your host, Ben Gothard, and today we have the honor of speaking with somebody who's been with the Printful team for years in the marketing department. Somebody who has helped facilitate their company's Printful's $500 million in sales plus somebody integral to the performance of the company and has who somebody who has optics into how her customers are making all of those sales. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the honor of speaking with Nora Invice. How are you doing today, Nora? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited to dive into some of the fundamentals here of how your customers are really selling so much product because yeah, that's what we're too. here to do, right? So uh, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about your story, and I would love to hear how you really got to where you are. Um, yeah, so I'd love to hear your story. Yeah, so um, I joined Printful about five years ago. Um, I'm originally from Toronto, but I'm based out of our Latvia office, which is in Europe. Um, back when I joined, um, we were about 15 people total, um, you know, in Latvia. Um, and over the last five years since I started, we've grown to um, about over a thousand people, I think, worldwide. Um, so it's been a really fun journey <laughs> kind of growing with the team. Um, so when I started, I did uh, a little bit of everything in content marketing. So I helped out with our blog, uh, email writing, social media. Um, we all kind of did a little bit of everything at that time. And over the course of a few years, I'm now a marketing project manager. So I write a lot less myself now. Um, and what my job is, is helping to coordinate, um, you know, big projects, you know, launches, new features. So I figure out, okay, how are we going to communicate this? What's the kind of message that we want to convey? Where do we convey it? And how do we get our customers on board with this? Um, so that's kind of what I do now. That is awesome. And I love how you've been at Printful and with Printful for so long that you've seen this explosion of growth and you've really seen the rise of print on demand and the rise of, of this whole industry. And not only that, but you're also spearheading humongous projects and launches and features. So you've, you really have optics into this industry and into how your customers are becoming successful in a way that very few people have. So that's really, really exciting that we get to chat about that today. So mm -hmm. without any further ado, I would love to dive into some of these fundamentals, some of these principles of how your customers were able to sell over $500 million of product. Yeah, so I guess um, some of the things that I've noticed and are, you know, most successful customers is primarily they understand, you know, they have an idea, um, they have a design, and that's great, but they also understand who exactly it is they're selling to, um, you know, so they have kind of a developed a well thought out niche. So they know exactly, okay, how, you know, how, how to target them on social media, on which platforms, how to kind of create ads that they're going to, that are going to appeal to that audience. Um, so I think that's something super important when you're first starting out selling um, products online is understanding um, who is that target audience that you want to appeal to because it's gonna, that's going to impact so much um, and your strategy and how you grow from there. Um, and I guess it's also important because print on demand, it's and selling stuff online in general, like it's just so accessible these days. It's so easy to get started that, um, you know, the market is also pretty saturated and there's also a lot of competition because there's a lot of other people doing the same things you are. So, you know, it's important that you understand where you fit into that and how you can differentiate yourself and make yourself unique. Um, so that's, I think, one of the key things that, you know, customers that succeed in e-commerce, that's one of the things that they do well is right off the bat, they know who they are and they know who they're selling to. So let's break that down a little bit. Do you see the people who are the most successful starting off with this laser like focus on a specific niche or do they start off more broadly and, and chisel down over time? Like what's that, that evolution? What does that journey look like for your most successful sellers? Um, 
you know, I think that depends on the seller. And that also, that's kind of the beauty of print on demand is that you have so much opportunity to experiment. So, you know, maybe you do start off with kind of a laser focused niche. You have an idea for something you want to try. Uh, you know, you create a new design, a new product, and you kind of try to branch out. Um, you know, sometimes that's going to succeed and you broaden your horizon. Sometimes maybe it's not going to succeed. It's not going to sell as well as you thought. But then, you know, since everything is printed on demand, it's fine. You're not really losing anything. So I think that gives you just a really cool opportunity that, you know, you're not stuck kind of in one niche if you want to be, or maybe you can go more broadly and you notice that specific designs or specific products are selling better than others. And then you can kind of narrow it down more easily. So I think it depends. And I think with print on demand, there's so many opportunities to just experiment and try new things and try targeting new audiences. So when we're talking about experimenting and, and choosing the niche, I want to get real specific here because I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding about what a niche really is and how to really dig deep into it. So I, I also think to continue the preface of, of the question um, that a lot of people are worried about, oh, well, if I go too narrow, I won't have anybody to sell to. So can you give some examples of really, really powerful niches? Like, it, is it is it down to the point of where it's like uh, we're selling to moms who are in their 40s who love um, – love elephants or something. I'm just coming up with something <laughs> random. Or would it be like somebody who's a, a fisher person, like loves to go fishing and is also very spiritual. And so then we're, we're crossing those two interests. Like, like what exactly is it a really strong niche and how do we make sure we have a really good one that's not too narrow if that's a thing, but it's also not just like this arbitrary crossing of interests. Yeah, I think, you know, it's difficult to find that, you know, real sweet spot because I do think you're right. If, if you know, you're too narrow, then, okay, maybe you have a couple of customers that are interested, but okay, are you really going to grow if you have, you know, five fans that are going to, um, you know, be, you know, that are in that niche? Um, on the other hand, if you're too broad, well then, you know, if you appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody type of things. So, like you really do have to narrow in and find kind of that sweet spot where, um, you know, it, it's specific, um, you know how to target it, but it's not too specific that you're not going to have enough of an audience, enough of a market to grow. Um, my advice is usually to start with what you know. Um, you know, if you already have an interest in something, um, you know, if you are a fisher person, if you like elephants, whatever, um, you know, if it's something that you are familiar with, then chances are there's other people out there that are also going to enjoy that. And if you're also already a part of like a community or a niche or, you know, some kind of a, you know, I don't know, cultural joke or, or something, you know, it's going to be easier for you to understand how to take it further and how to create designs and how to target um, that specific audience. That makes so much sense. And just to provide some like numbers here, just to, to really hammer down the point of what it takes. Uh, I've read a lot about PayPal's history and they actually got started when they really started to take off and started to, cater to a specific niche and really get traction they targeted ebay's power sellers and they had a very specific niche of about twenty thousand of these power sellers and these were people who were doing a lot of volume so each customer represented a lot of um, potential value for paypal and look how big they got so i i think hopefully that sort of number can give some context to what we're talking about of like, well, we want to have enough people to be able to really build a business and enough people to actually serve to where it's meaningful for, for the group, but not too many to where it's not really specific, like selling, selling a product on eBay and happens to be a power seller. Like that's kind of like your, your niche. Well, first it's selling online, selling on eBay, power seller. So it's like, you're kind of making three little turns or, or three little uh, carves into the rock to get to that gold there. Um, so, I, you know, I just wanted to provide that to, to be a little bit more specific. So great. So, okay, now we've picked our niche. Uh, we understand who we're talking to. What's next? 
Uh, I mean, next is, you know, you figure out how, you know, how to, how to reach them, I guess. So, you know, you figure out how you want to position yourself for the market. So consider, you know, is your niche, you know, are your audience, you know, maybe they want to be more stylish and more trendy. Um, you know, that'll dictate whether you sell, uh, you know, a, a trending item like a all over print sweatshirt or sweatpants. Um, you know, if your niche is more kind of like interested in staple basic products, then you can choose, you know, uh, a basic t-shirt or something like that. Um, you know, you can also think about um, how to price your products, for example. So again, you know, if you want, if, if your audience is okay with spending a little bit more, then maybe then you position yourself as like a more premium brand. If they're, you know, more budget conscious, then you can position yourself as an affordable brand. Um, same with designs, like think of what is going to appeal to, to your audience. Do they like, um, you know, kind of more retro style, more rustic, uh, minimalist, you know, pastel kind of trending colors. So all of that is going to play into, okay, how, how am I going to create my products? How are my designs going to look? How am I actually going to price them? Um, and same with like communication channels and how you communicate as well. You know, if your audience, if they, um, you know, if they skew like younger, you know, then maybe you want to explore platforms like TikTok or, you know, kind of the kind of platforms that young people gravitate towards where you can spend time growing your presence. Um, you know, if maybe you have a bit of an older demographic, you can stick to, you know, Facebook, Instagram, um, kind of the classic uh, channels. So, you know, I guess, yeah, understand, okay, who your audience is and then how, you know, how to create your store with them in mind, you know, think of the products, the pricing, the designs, and then, you know, how you're going to, how you're going to communicate with your audience. So, I think it's really important here to talk a little bit about pricing and how to make sure before we've tested, we know what to price our products at, what designs to actually choose. We know our niche, but we're not exactly sure what's going to sell. So how do we go about doing this? Is it experimentation or, or how do we really approach this? Um, so with price, it's, it's pretty hard to figure out how to price your products because on the one hand, you know, you don't want to, you know, price them so high that you're going to scare customers away. On the other hand, you don't want to lowball it because you're still, you know, you want to pay yourself. You're putting in all this effort to create a business. So you want to find that balance of, okay, what's the price that my customers are going to be willing to pay, um, but where I'm still getting um, a fair profit. So, you know, it is a little bit of experimentation and research. Um, you know, I suggest looking up comparable brands um, at other companies and see, you know, kind of what they're selling at. Um, and then, you know, there's different strategies you can go for. Um, you know, you could kind of price um, more expensive than competitors and kind of brand yourself as the more premium, the more quality choice. You can price your products cheaper than competitors, um, which, you know, maybe then you'll get, you know, more, more sales because customers don't want to pay for, you know, the, the more expensive products. Um, there, of course, you run the list, risk of, you know, kind of, what's the word, you know, cheapening your own brand, you know, so you don't want to go too low either. So, you know, it's about kind of calculating, um, your own labor, how much money and how much time are you putting into it? What do you feel would be a fair compensation for yourself? Um, so you understand kind of a range that you think is fair um, and then doing the research and also experimenting. Yeah, you know, if you price your products, you know, a little bit too high and customers aren't biting, well, you can try pricing a little bit lower and see what happens there. So it's just, it's pretty difficult to really like nail that sweet spot and it's gonna take a lot of research and, and um, you know, calculating on your part. Um, in terms of designs, there again, it's going to be experimentation. And that's also, again, like the beauty of print on demand is that it's so easy to experiment. Generally, what we suggest is starting out, um, I guess you don't want to, you know, if you're selling a t-shirt with a design, um, we recommend sticking to just a couple of colors in the beginning. Um, you know, if you're selling a product that comes in, you know, a whole rainbow of colors, it's not necessarily a great idea to offer all that on your store just because you're going to maybe, um, what is it? It's the, the choice paralysis. You know, if there's a ton of choices, then customers are just going to be overwhelmed and they're not going to pick anything. So it's a good idea to start with, you know, one design, maybe a couple of colors, um, you know, keep the choice fairly simple. Um, and same with, you know, deciding how many products you want to sell. Um, you know, maybe you want to do t-shirts, hats, posters, phone cases, you know, all the products with your design. Cool. Um, but, you know, maybe start with just a couple um, to make that choice even easier for customers. Um, and if you find, you know, maybe you can try adding, you know, seasonal designs or seasonal colors too and seeing how that sells. And if, you know, that product sells really well, then you can keep it on, you know, full time, um, you know, forever. So it is, you know, it's... 
so many of my answers are just going to be about, you know, how it's, it's all about experimenting and, you know, getting your toes wet and trying. But I think with the yeah, pricing with designs, it just comes down to, you know, what your audience wants, what they're willing to pay and what they're interested in buying. That makes a ton of sense. And one of the things that I've seen work really well is to actually go and read the reviews of your comp of your competitors and see, okay, well, are people complaining about something? Are they not liking something? Are they really liking something? Like what, what designs are really resonating with them? And that can give you inspiration uh, for your own designs or, or at least for the style of your designs. I'm of course not at all um, suggesting to copy at all. No, 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 bad. Don't do that. But mm -hmm. learning from your competitors and getting inspiration from them is a good idea. Yeah, and that's also what I've read too is, you know, using reviews, um, also reading what people like about your competitors and then using that as part of your, you know, unique selling point. Um, I don't know how much it's going to apply necessarily to, you know, apparel and t-shirts. I feel like there's only so much people are going to write that they like about t-shirts, but it's just a good idea to get an idea, you know, of what people, you know, are praising about competitors and where maybe you want to also highlight that, hey, you know, my brand is also good at this. Absolutely. And some people will even attach photos. So if you see a lot of customers attaching photos of a certain color, then you know, okay, well, this color is really resonating with the people for whatever reason. And then you can alter your experiments based on that. So when, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. So I was going to also just add, like, look at what else is kind of trending in the world of design at a given moment. Like Pantone, they come out with their color of the year every year. Um, what was it this year? Like blue or something, baby blue, some kind of a pastel. Um, then look at, you know, pastel colors. They're also generally really trending right now. Minimalism, that's trending right now. Um, I see a lot of, um, you know, designs with simple typography, maybe like with a, with a meme, with a sentence or something. Like a lot of these designs are trending. Um, of course, you don't always just want to follow all of the trends like you want to kind of you know maybe want to pick a, a design or a concept that's you know everlasting but you know looking at what's popular right now is a good way to figure out where people are you know where their interests lie in the moment so when you are seeing and, and when you're advising customers and, and launching these new features are the customer are your customers who are the most successful are they the ones who have totally outrageous designs that are super controversial controversial or extreme and almost polarizing or are you seeing people successful with more neutral let's kind of be a, a please everybody type of type of design like what do you see working best there i don't think i've noticed like a specific trend um I think, you know, just the most successful sellers, like they know what their audience wants and that's what they deliver, whether that is maybe a more like bold pattern, maybe it is a design that's going to get people talking, that's going to, you know, create a bit of controversy or drama, um, you know, maybe, you know, what I've seen, you know, pretty popular right now is just like basic kind of typographic designs. It's very simple. Um, those also, you know, are doing really well. If you know that that's kind of what your niche is into, um, whether it's, I don't know, like a pun or, or you know, something simple, that's also like totally, um, totally popular right now. So it just, again, it depends on the niche and, and what they're looking for. And I think anything can be successful if you know how to reach your niche, how to market to them. So let's talk about, because I feel like this is a, a concern for a lot of people getting into the print on demand business, drop shipping business, e-com in general, of the longevity of the business and being able to build an asset that is powerful and that is long lasting and that has value in and of itself. So can you talk a little bit about how you've seen your customers build businesses that are really long lasting, that are, they're able to scale it and they're able to build something of value that either they can pass on or they could sell and really be able to benefit from all of their hard work over the, over the years. Yeah, so it's definitely hard work. Um, you know, it's not like you can start a store, you know, partner with a print on demand dropshipper and you know, it's an overnight success. Um, you know, it does take a lot of, uh, you know, blood, sweat and tears to really get to a point where, um, okay, like I can make this my full time job now. This is something that's going to last and that, you know, I've built long term. Um, 
I think maybe what the most successful sellers do is they recognize that the main value in their business is in the brand. You know, when you're partnering with a dropshipper, you don't own, you know, the inventory or anything like that. It's like what you really have is your brand that you put out. So I think a lot of it is about, um, you know, really understanding who you are, um, building a loyal fan base. Um, you know, I've seen some successful customers also like build kind of a community, um, you know, of people that, that like you um, and that, that, you know, care about your business. Um, I think it's also important to explore different channels um, and different kind of ways to access customers, whether that's, you know, selling, you know, you have your online store, obviously, um, maybe you sell some products on online marketplaces as well. Um, you know, trade shows, craft shows, that kind of thing is also worth experimenting. So just like recognizing all the different avenues and ways that you can sell your products um, and really building kind of that loyal, that loyal fan base that's going to buy from you repeatedly. And that's also going to spread your brand um, through word of mouth. That's going to like you and talk about you and refer you to their friends. Um, which again, like it's, it's difficult to get to that point. I think like you really have to nail the communication, um, nail your story and your products and, you know, just the look of your store. Um, it's all kind of in, in one package. Well, I also think the beauty of doing a print on demand business is a lot of the kind of back office hard work is done for you of the packaging and the shipping and the printing and the, all that stuff and the, the fulfillment, everything is really handled for you so that you do have the ability to focus on the branding and the marketing and the communication and building your audience. And you have the time to be able to invest in those things because everything else is really handled for you. Yeah, exactly. Like you, yeah, you outsource so much of the heavy lifting that, you know, you have that time to think about the marketing and the business and, you know, thinking about new designs, new product ideas. So yeah, it, it definitely gives you more time to, to experiment and to try new things and to kind of grow that, that brand. That's amazing. Well, uh, you know, I, I want to be very respectful of your time, uh, Nora, and, and, you know, I have enjoyed this so thoroughly. Um, so I want to talk a just a little bit more of, of any any other last tips or strategies or, or principles that, that we should be exploring, uh, and then, then we'll go ahead and wrap it up after that. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I guess another thing to think about um, is just when you're setting up your store, when you have your niche in mind, um, is setting up your store for success. So making sure that, um, you know, when you do start more, you know, marketing efforts, if you do put your name out there or your store out there, that when people actually land on your store, um, they like what they see and they're going to want to buy your product. So make sure that you also pay attention to things like your product photos, product descriptions. That's such a key place to, you know, show off what you're selling, to show your brand, to your personality, to help visualize, you know, your customers visualize themselves with what you're selling. Um, you know, building, again, this kind of goes uh, a little bit with, you know, building loyalty and a fan base, but really cultivating that social proof and getting those customer reviews and user generated content and really, you know, asking for it. Um, you know, that's the easiest way to get a review is to just, um, you know, after a customer gets their products, like ask, um, Hey, would you mind, you know, giving me a testimonial or, you know, giving me a like on Facebook. Um, so these are all things to pay attention to as well, like on your actual store, uh, just so that, you know, customers can see that this is a legitimate business. It's, you know, a brand that I am interested in and that other people are interested in too. Um, it just makes you more trustworthy and, and more likely that people will follow you. Amazing. So Nora, again, I want to thank you so, so much. Uh, I know your time is extremely valuable. So thank you for sharing some of it with us today and for really digging into some of these principles behind how your company has um, has helped your customers do over $500 million in sales. That's an extraordinary number. So congratulations on, on reaching that benchmark. Um, really, really incredible. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was, yeah, a really fun chat. I'm always glad to share a bit of knowledge and you know, some tidbits that you know we've seen at Printful over the years. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And everybody watching and listening, thank you. And I will see everybody on the next episode.